New drone video, recorded in 2018, but never before seen by the general public, has been released by the U.S. Geological Survey. The footage shows the heartbreaking final hours of Kapoho, the beloved seaside community along the Puna shore, on the day it was taken by lava. The footage is part of an expansive release by the federal agency, which includes over a thousand video files, recorded during the four-month eruption of Kilauea on the Lower East Rift Zone two and a half years ago. This dataset contains material recorded by unoccupied aircraft systems, deployed to measure flow velocities and inform emergency responders. This is the second story in our series exploring the newly available archive. It begins on June 2nd, as the wide lava flow from the Fissure 8 vent in Leilani Estates was advancing downslope towards the ocean. The lava crossed the Four Corners intersection of Highway 132 and Highway 137 and surrounded Kapoho Crater, where it quickly vaporized the famous Green Lake that was located there. The lava crawled along engulfing homes and farms along the way. All residents were evacuated from the vacation land and Kapoho Beach lot subdivisions. This is the civil defense message that was broadcast that evening. Lava has crossed Government Beach Road and Highway 137 and inundated the Four Corners intersection. The flow is moving downslope toward the ocean into Kapoho Beach lots. Due to lava crossing Highway 137, the following policies are in effect. There is no access to Kapoho, Vacation Land, Highway 132, and Highway 137. The next day, June 3, 2018, the last day for Kapoho. This drone footage is part of the new government archive release. Most of it was not available to the public at the time. During this June 3rd conference call, emergency officials provided an update on the situation. As of 7.30 a.m. this morning, the lava flow front was 430 yards from the ocean and advancing, although slowed, uh, slowed rate compared with yesterday. The uh, residents have all uh, been ordered to evacuate this area, and anyone who is left there is likely trapped as the roads are cut off. The lava entered the bay at 10.30 p.m. that evening. Civil Defense gave this update on the morning of June 4th. The lava entered the ocean at Kapoho Bay, and uh, you know, in, on its march, it took out a lot more houses. I think we're up to about 117 houses right now, but we still have a lot more to count. This just included the houses that were b even before Kapoho. This was just the houses uh, along 130, 132 before it got down to the Kapoho area. Uh, my count before. It even um, reached the ocean last night when I left it about 1900 was, was at least 42 more houses before that that section was taken out. So a lot of, a lot of distract, I mean, destruction going on. Um, so we're monitoring that, also uh, maintaining the, the closure areas. We saw some fingers start to move on the north side of that flow that kind of made us make sure that we are alerting the people on the Cinder Road or the Papaya Farms Road. And so, you know, all of our operations are still very active as far as responding to the lava flows, the sheltering. Uh, the KL site was full last night, and uh, although Pohoa still has got about 300 space left uh, for people, uh, so we can, we can handle more. Um, over the next few days, most of vacation land and Kapoho beach lots would become covered by lava. Mayor Harry Kim was among the many who lost a home in the event. I'm looking at my very good friend here, Adam, who lost a lot. I was talking to Greg. These are people I've met from way back. I bought my place in 1971 because I wanted a piece of Puna because I knew what was happening in some place that I could just sit by the water. I had to borrow $5,000 to buy it. Sounds like nothing now, but it was all I had. Mayor Kim's words, shared during a community meeting in Pahoa, were a reminder of the beauty of the area, shaped over the years by constant change. When I bought it, it was a lousy lot, but that's all I could afford. The pond in front of me, which you call Waiopai now, with a beautiful coral outside, was what we call a mullet pond. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Why do we call it mullet pond? Mullet pond because the water was murky and muddy because there was no circulation. That was 1971. Then came that very horrendous day of 1975, huge earthquake. So the whole area sank about two and a half feet. 
And that's why we have the wild pie ponds. And it's the truth. The mud water was flushed out within a couple of months. And within a few months after that, different fish, a few months after that, the corals started to come in. So sometimes you just don't know what the future holds, but sometimes it makes it better. But I know those are just words. I saw with huge sadness, Greg Braun. I met him when they were young kids, him and his wife. Dreams of a place down there, borrowed money. I remember SBA, college kids, because I'm that old. And they made a very successful business, and they lost it. You know, if Greg could not even hold back his emotions as he's just staying high. I'm just telling you all that of my good friend Adam. I know how it hurts inside. A lava delta was now building at Kapoho Bay, new land extending out into the sea. Our examination of the newly released video archive will continue in the third part of our series still to come.